All right, so let's talk some basketball. And, and I guess Canada is kind of hoping for this Victoria what a difference a year makes here. Oh, absolutely. And and I think it it will be different this year. I think, um, you know, what happened in this arena just bare, just over a year ago where they were eliminated by Czech Republic on a Thomas Sadoransky prayer after a furious comeback uh, from Olympic, uh, you know, the opportunity to play in the Olympics. I, I think that was a galvanizing moment for the program. I think it was a galvanizing moment for enough of the players on that team. And I think we've seen it this summer that the commitment level I think is higher than it's been I think they they understand the big picture and you know that doesn't guarantee anything against Argentina which you, who will be their sternest test so far in this qualifying process but I think you know in the big picture for this program uh, there is progress being made okay so I, I understand that there's a lot of people who watch this program and just say tell me when they show up but i have i hate to have to ask it but who's there who's playing in this window against argentina and panama uh they they're gonna have seven or eight of their four summer core of 14 uh depends a little bit on corey joseph who was uh missed the first day of practice with on you know kind of i, I believe covid concerns but he practiced today so i presume he's going to be playing so that's going to be the biggest number they've had in a window um i think the other key thing to notice is some of the players you would love to have playing that aren't playing are here so dylan brooks is here lou dort is here rj barrett who can't play because he's got about 120 million dollar contract extension to sign before he can play uh you know feels comfortable playing five on five competitive basketball he's here um you know i i think the only two people you would like to be here are Jamal Murray and O'Shea Brissett, each of who aren't, but they were present at the window in Toronto and, and participated. So I think the goal of having guys, even if they're playing or not, be around the team, be able to soak up what's going on and uh, you know, allow the momentum to build in terms of institutional knowledge, I think that's been a success. Uh, so I think from that point of view, I think the program's heading in the right direction. It's not perfect. Uh, it probably won't ever be perfect. But I think the fact that you've got guys taking time out of their schedules to, to be here just to sort of show support, even though they're not playing, that's not insignificant. No, I don't think that's insignificant, especially, especially given the, the past of this program and where people were in this program and what they wanted to contribute to this program. The crazy thing about all this is, if I'm not mistaken, Mike, they might be able to qualify for the World Cup in this window. Is that possible? It is. It depends on it depends on them winning. They got to win both their games, and then Dominican Republic would have to lose both of their games, um, and then they would advance. But uh, which would be great. But in a way, not all that meaningful. I, I think it's almost guaranteed. You can say that Canada is going to qualify for the World Cup. Uh, seven out of the remaining twelve teams will go. Canada is in first place in their group. They've got the best point differential. It's almost impossible for them to not advance to uh, the World Championships next summer. Don't I think say the that. key Don't here say that, the Mike. That scares all Canadian World basketball. Cup. The World yeah, Cup. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a little bit oh, different. No, no, no. I, I will say that. They're going to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the key is is they got to go in style. They they want the most ranking points possible. They want the highest seeding possible because the tire really hits the road at the World, at the World Cup where they have to finish uh, uh, top two among teams at the World Cup from the Americas in order to pre-qualify for the Olympics. And I think that's got to be the job one for this program. I think it would really change the trajectory of anything, of everything if they could pull that off. The, the part of this that makes it real interesting is if they struggle in this window, then you go back to local pros, college players, like that next window, and I just saw 16 play, like some of the European pros can't even make it over for that. True. I mean, that is a challenge, but it, at least that challenge is equally distributed in the sense that, you know, other teams can't call on their NBA right. players during those windows or their uh, top level European pros during that window. And, and I think Canada has shown uh, going back to the first go round qualifying for the World Championships in 2019, 2019 that they can manage. There's enough, enough depth that they can manage uh, quality wins against good opponents even without their best pros in those kind of off season or I should say in season windows. So I think they're they're you know, that's one thing you can't argue with Canada basketball right now is there are a lot of quality players that can help this team when needed.
All right, we got three minutes here. I want to get one last question on Canada and get a little Kevin Durant in here. But does it feel like the, listen, you and I have followed this program for long enough, seen enough heartbreak that I stopped you mid-question to say, wait a second, don't say that because we've been slapped enough in the face. Does it feel like the, the culture around the program is changing enough that people can buy in and not be worried that they won't be slapped in the face again? I mean, I think so. And I point to Shea Gilgis Alexander. I mean, he doesn't absolutely have to be here. I mean, he played both games in the first window, and yet he's here in Victoria, which, look, it's the most beautiful place in Canada, arguably, but it's not the easiest place in Canada to get to. Um, but he's here, and his cousin Nikhil is here. They're going to be in Panama as well on Monday, which, again, is... You know, I think Not on the easy. list of things yep. Shea Gilgis Alexander could do on a weekend, flying to Panama is probably not at the top of them. So, to his credit, he's been engaged, and he's been arguably the most engaged of all Canada's top NBA players, along with Kelly Olynyk, Dwight Powell, and all of that. So, I think when when guys of that caliber are that committed, and you know, you see Lou Dort, who hasn't been able to play because of injury, he's been here. Uh, he was there all all six days in the first window. He's been here all week. Uh, now in the second window without even getting a chance to play. I mean, I think that speaks really well. RJ Barrett's been around. Uh, Dylan Brooks, who wasn't around the first time, he's been around. And, and you know, we're overlooking the guys who actually do play. <laughs> and let's not forget them, the Mel Edgens and the Scrub Brothers and all these, Cass Roberts and all these guys who really uh, keep the wheels rolling around here. But uh, I think that, that's, that they've struck on something. And again, the test isn't so much in this stage of qualifying. I think they're laying the groundwork. I think the real... Right test and, and we're gonna have a lot of conversations about it is gonna be next uh, next summer at the world Championship. Back in victoria bc this week much anticipated return after last year's really exciting fiba olympic qualifiers victoria will play host to canada's first fiba basketball world cup 2023 qualifiers game in the second round but head coach nick nurse isn't interested in living in the past i don't know that's pretty much history for for me you know i'm i'm Kind of happy with the progress we've made. This is as as big a game as it gets so far in this competition, for sure. And um, we need to play. We need to play better than we did last summer here.